Hello, and thanks for watching this video on how to create a bathymetric map from available online NOAA data and map your own data points onto it. Uh, this is the map we're going to be making. So this is the Big Island of Hawaii. This data was downloaded, like I said, from NOAA. Uh, and in this case, each one of these individual dots represents a single sample of algae in this case. So here I've selected 25 of this species that's colored brown, 25 red, and 25 pink. Um, and that all comes from a CSV with all of that information stored in it. So in order to do this video, before you get started, you'll want the link to the NOAA Bathymetric Data Viewer, which you can find in the description. You'll need to download the program QGIS, and you'll need to have a CSV file that contains uh, at least three columns, your latitude, your longitude, and some sort of variable that you'd like to color these points by. So in my case, I have my colors being driven by this preliminary ID column. So in this case, this is the genus of algae and a latitude and longitude. Um, so we also have things like depth in here, which we could use to color these points. Um, but today we'll do by species name. So once you have this, Let's go ahead and open up the bathymetric data viewer. And you'll be presented with a screen like this. So in our case, we want to look at the big island of Hawaii. So let's zoom in on that. And just to simplify this, I'm going to shut down the options for these other layers and clean it up a bit. So now we have a better picture of what we're actually looking at. And then we're going to go down to this grid extract button down here. So we click grid extract. And the data set that we want to download is the DEM Global Mosaic Hillshade. So if you click that, you'll see what it will look like. And that's what that's the map that we were aiming for. Um, so that's a good start. We can keep this option. You can change this option if you're looking at a very small area. You can adjust this down. If you're looking at a very large area, you can adjust this up. I find that for this map, a 90 meter resolution is plenty since we'll be viewing it at scale. Um, once these two options are selected, we're going to go ahead and draw a rectangle. And this is a simple click and drag. And a download data button will appear on the bottom left. You just go ahead and click that. And once that is downloaded, I'm going to go ahead and move it into a folder that I created on my desktop called Map Demo. And now we are ready to go into QGIS. So when you first open QGIS, you'll be presented with a screen like this. We're gonna go ahead and start off, start off with this browser and find our folder. So my folder was saved on the desktop. in a folder called Map Demo. And here we can see our export image and our lat long points. So once we found that, let's go ahead and create a new project. And that'll make a blank screen here. And then we can just click on that export image. This is the data straight from NOAA and just drag it into the field. So we end up with a bit of a patchy background here. And that's just because the digital elevation model might be too steep in these areas, or those areas actually haven't been quite mapped yet. So what we want to do is add in another layer here. So let's go back to the bathymetric data viewer, where our grid extract is still selected. And as another layer, we're going to use the QDEM mosaic. Go ahead and click that. Don't change your points. No need to draw a new rectangle and download that data as well. Q dem, and we're gonna go ahead and drag that 
into our map demo as well. So now if we drag in this QDEM layer, we can see that it's just a hill shade. So let's go ahead and drag that QDEM behind our export image. And you can see that those patches have been at least colored in. Now we can add to this by double clicking on the QDEM, which will bring up a window like this. And you can click on symbology and change this single band gray to a hill shade. And okay. You can see those areas virtually disappeared. So if we close down the export image, we can see that the hill shade on the raw QDEM layer looks like this. And we're adding the export layer on top of it. So that fills in those little white gaps. Now that we have our base layer mapped out, we can go ahead and hit layer. And we want to add a layer from a delimited text layer. And that will bring up a window like this, where we can click on these three dots here to search for our file. In this case, it was the desktop, map demo, lat long points. OK. And now we need to specify which fields in this actually correlate to the latitude and longitude. So the X layer will be longitude, and the Y layer or Y field will be latitude. And then, oops, latitude. And then we can go ahead and add that in and close this window. Drag that to the top so you can actually see it. You can see that these points have all propagated into the map. Now, there's a few issues here already. Each one of these sites has multiple dots underneath it. So all we're seeing is the very top layer. On top of that, they have not been color coded yet per individual species. So we're going to have to go into the settings for this lat long points and figure that out. I'm going to go ahead and click on that, double click on that, which will bring up a window like this. Now in the symbology layer, you'll see a value on top for single symbol. Let's change that to a rule-based symbol. Uh, excuse me, a categorized symbol. And the value that we want to use for that category is that preliminary ID column. The symbol we use is a circle and will generate random colors for each species. Once you have your value and your symbol selected, you can just hit classify which will assign a random color to each one of these. Now this database is much bigger than what I need to display. So I'm gonna end up unclicking quite a few of these. But for now, let's stick with this and hit apply and okay. And we can see that now the colors have all changed for these individual points. But we still have the problem that too many values are being displayed and they're all being displayed directly on top of each other. So let's go ahead and go back into this lat long points, double click. And instead of the categorized value, we can do a point cluster. Point displacement, excuse me, with a grid pattern. And let's apply that and see what it looks like. So now each one of these sample points is displaying the number of samples taken, in this case 24 or 74, and the three different species. So the display options are still a little funky. And by the way, if this gets zoomed in or zoomed out too far, you can always click on your image layer and zoom to that layer to reset. Um, so let's clean this up a bit more. Let's go back into the lat long points. And let's go back and look at this categorized value. So we can click the renderer settings to pull up the window that we worked on earlier. And I don't need all of these species. So I'm going to unclick them all with the exception of the species that I'm actually interested in, which in this case are Anfeltiopsis, Amancia, 
Asparagopsis. And now I've made the mistake here of calling some of my columns or some of my rows Asparagopsis and some of them Asparagopsis taxiformis. These are actually the same thing. So I'm gonna keep them both selected. But I'm gonna go through and unclick all these others. with the exception of Sargassum aquifolium, which is another species that we're interested in. Now I'll hit OK and apply. Now in this case, those were the only species that I sampled in this area, so there's no issue. So let's adjust this a little more. Each one of these color-coded uh, locations has a number in the middle of it that shows the, the number of samples collected from that site. We don't need that value. So we're gonna go ahead and click on that. And let's get rid of it. So size, zero, okay, apply. So that cleaned things up quite a bit. You can see that our grid pattern has shrunk down, but they're still overlapping quite a bit. So let's make these smaller. So we can go into the settings, again in the symbology, in the lat long points window. And we can keep adjusting parameters and applying those and see how those change the resulting uh, map layer. Um, so these are all adjustable and you'll have to adjust based on your field of view, your zoom view, in order to get the grid size right for your particular application. You can also render these settings again. And let's say that we want these two asparagopsis to appear the same on this map. We can click on each of them and make them the same color. So in this case, let's choose a simple pink, okay. And the same pink for this, okay. And now those two will appear the same throughout the map. Once you're happy with your map, you can export it into a PDF document and add in legends and other layers on top. If you have any questions, let me know. And thanks for watching.